yeah, Margaret Flowers. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. I'm running for U.S. Senate as a Green Party candidate. And I'm the honorary co-chair of the Presidential Nominating Convention in Houston. Excellent. Yeah. So um, tell me about how the DNC has been for you so far. Well, the most amazing thing has been um, what's happening out here on the streets in Philadelphia, where every single day we've marched with thousands of people. And um, the overwhelming sentiment out here is no way is anybody going to vote for Hillary Clinton, a Wall Street and war candidate. And um, there's been so much love for Dr. Jill Stein, the Green Party candidate. And so we're just super excited about that and about how quickly the campaign is growing and feel like this is going to be a really strong year for Greece across the country. That's exciting. And yeah. Jill's polling higher than, than she has. I mean, she's polling very high right now, isn't she? It's been, you know, there's different polls, but sure. she's been as high as 7%, which is like, considering that like 80% of people in the U.S. still don't know that she exists. That's amazing. That is really amazing. What's amazing to us is that she's not really getting a ton of mainstream coverage, but everywhere she goes, her message completely resonates with people. If the media were actually covering what she's doing, like they do with the other candidates, she would be off the charts, I think, right now. Yeah. Let's talk a little about your campaign. Why do you think voters should uh, should vote for you in November? Well, we have an outgoing senator, Senator Barbara Mikulski, and so it's an open seat. And the Democrat who's going in there is Chris Van Hollen, or the one who wants to go in there. Um, Chris is a former head of the DCCC. He paints himself as a progressive, but he's very closely tied to Wall Street. Most of his funding comes from lobbyists and um, you know real estate developers and financial institutions. And he raised over eight million dollars in a primary race, which is unheard of in mm -hmm. Maryland. So he's proven over his you know time in Congress that he's a status quo Democrat who's willing to do what the party wants him to do. And we can't have that anymore. We have too many crises that we're facing, and we need people in the Senate who are willing to fight for the solutions we need. I've been working really hard on the outside through popular resistance, and we've had some successful campaigns. So now we need to take that fight inside the Senate and continue it. I'd like to hear what you think about like just the, the process of building a third party. Obviously, it's a very ongoing one, uh, and I yeah. feel like we're gaining some 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 ground this year that hasn't before. Absolutely, you know the you know abolition party. It took decades and decades before they were successful, and it's been the same way with every third party. There's so many obstacles. I mean, for instance, in where I live in Baltimore, the major media it won't cover my campaign at all, but they're constantly covering the other candidates. Um, but we're putting in place infrastructure. We have great candidates running for city council, for mayor, for Congress, you know, all different levels. And we're, we're confident that we'll have some wins this year. And that uh, if Jill can get to 5% uh, in terms of votes this presidential election, which we think is easily doable, then she'll, the next candidate will have automatic funding. Um, we're working really hard to get her polling up so we can get her into the debates so that more people can hear her. So this is really, whatever happens this year, we are pushing forward to build the alternative party that we need and the alternative power that we need for progressive change. So today this gathering is about the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Why is that such an important issue? Wow, Especially for you as a doctor, right? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, for everybody. There's not a single you know, person that this doesn't impact, but in terms of health care, it's going to raise the cost of health care for everyone. It gives much longer patent protections to pharmaceuticals and medical device companies, but it's going to prevent us from going to the real solution we need, a national improved Medicare for all or a single-payer health care system. Um, so we're coming down to the wire on this. It's been uh, completed, it's been signed, it just needs to be ratified, and the president is going to try to push it through during the lame duck session after the election. So this is a critical time to resist the TPP. We're urging everybody to go to our website, flushthetpp.org. It's a funny name, but it works. So flushthetpp.org uh, slash no lame duck and sign up, and we're going to stop this thing. And then, as my partner Kevin Zeese, also co-director of Popular Resistance, says, then we're going to build to the next level which is whoever is elected president, starting in January, we need to rise up and set the agenda and not let the elites do that anymore. Get your name and also tell me about what you're running for. Okay, my name is Stephanie Anderson. I'm running for the U.S. House of Representatives, 23rd District, against the incumbent, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who's, the step, who's just recently stepped down as party chair. Now, I know that uh, Bernie Sanders has endorsed, what, Canova. Yes. Why, why do you feel like you're a better choice? Well, I think that my my um, visions actually work better for our entire community as opposed to just one segment. Um, Tim and I have many of the same ideals, um, same um, um, ideas on TPP and on GMO. Well, I'm not sure how he feels about GMO, but definitely on the TPP and some issues. However, 
I have a more well-rounded approach to the community. Um, I don't just deal with one segment of the community. I work within um, a lot of different areas. Um, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been active in my community mm. for over 20 years. And so this is just a, a national, a natural progression to, um, as a public servant. And what do you What do you do in your day-to-day -day life? I'm a business consultant and I raise money for charities. And so I also help them to set up and structure themselves correctly. One of the things that I've done for the last 20 years is instead of charging um, organizations that couldn't afford the resources that I bring, I uh, um, build them on a sliding scale or pro bono to where most of my clients only pay 25% of my hourly rate. Cool. Let's talk about the TPP. That's why everybody's here today. Why is it so important to oppose that? It's extremely important because it's going to reduce American sovereign rights. It'll allow other countries and other um, uh, other uh, people in other countries to sue the American government, which we don't even have a right to do that. It also um, get, uh, eliminates our um, some of the things that we would do as, a, as um, in Congress or in different legislative roles. Um, it will be overruled by what the TPP. TPP um, does. Right, uh, I guess you just introduce yourself to get us started here. Okay, my name's Mike Coverdale. I'm an independent candidate in Washington 6th District, Washington State. And uh, tell me why you're running, why, why you think, it, why your uh, candidacy is important. Well, I'm not a politician. I was woken up by Bernie Sanders about six months ago. I'd been focused in my own community and my own life. And I heard his a speech and, and that uh, got me a little bit excited. So I went to a few meetings to, to meet people and learn more about him, which got me even more excited about the prospect of having what appeared to be an honest can, uh, can, candidate for president. And in the process of trying to figure out how to support him, I found out that our own congressman um, was favoring issues that I was opposed to, uh, fracking, Trans-Pacific Partnership, supporting Wall Street, doing some things that really surprised me. Well, who is that that you're running against? I'm running against uh, Democratic Congressman Derek Kilmer okay. in our 6th District, which is the Olympic Peninsula of Washington. And, um, and so I spent a month trying to find someone to run against him who was political in nature or had some aspiration to be a politician, and I couldn't find anyone. And the last day of filing, when no one had stepped up to run against him, I put my name on the ballot. And shortly after that, the re my research uh, alarmed me even more, so I decided to make a commitment to actually try to defeat him. He's uh, well-funded, he's got a couple million dollars in his campaign account, and he's got the Democratic Party behind him, but the people of 6th District are very upset with his positions, and I have found that I have quite a bit of support, so there is a, a, a slim but, but true opportunity for an independent candidate with no political background to rise to the congressional position. What is your background? I uh, Originally I was a pilot in the military, a warrant, uh, warrant officer helicopter pilot, and I got out and flew helicopters around the country for about 10 years and then moved home to my hometown of Westport, Washington to raise my family. I opened a real estate office, so I, I sell real estate on the beach in uh, the coast of Washington. That's great, yeah. Uh, so tell me you got this no TPP button on. Why is it important to oppose the Trans-Pacific Partnership? Well, it's not important, it's hugely important. And that is because it's an agreement crafted by hundreds of corporate attorneys to create an environment for corporations to flourish forever. And all of the trade agreements that we've been through before, none of them have performed to create jobs. They've all been negative for us, the people, positive for the corporations. And there's two aspects of Trans-Pacific Partnership that make it an absolute defeat situation and one of them the first one is that the 12 nations that are in it um, to change this if it goes into effect to amend it or, or kill it would take a hundred percent agreement of 12 nations and if you've ever tried to get 12 people to agree on anything from a flavor of ice cream to where you're gonna go for dinner you know it's impossible there's always gonna be one that's not gonna be happy and that one could be the Sultan of Brunei Brunei is one of the 12 nations and as Sultan, he really has no obligation or emotional reason to change things for the better of someone else. And so to commit to something that will affect our grandchildren's grandchildren is ludicrous. The second and the, the biggest deal killer is called the Investor State Dispute Resolution Section. Chapter 28, if you can find it online. And what that says is that if we as a nation or a state or a county or a city 
change our regulations that negatively impact the profitability of a corporation, we can be sued for lost future profit. So a best example of that, I'm from the state of Washington, if Trans-Pacific Partnership gets voted in in November while we're full of turkey and watching football, and next year Washington decides to ban fracking in the state of Washington, ExxonMobil can sue the state of Washington for lost profit, and that lawsuit isn't heard in our court, it's heard by a three attorney tribunal one for the state of Washington, one for the uh, ExxonMobil, and one assigned by the 12 Nation Consortium. And those three attorneys go in a back room and decide how many hundreds of millions of dollars of lost profit the state of Washington will have to pay ExxonMobil because we decided we wanted to protect our water. And that's just unacceptable. Any elected official today that won't say that they oppose Trans-Pacific Partnership has to be voted out of office.